It's Fond du Lac, the top of the world in Saskatchewan, and tonight it's time for a celebration. At this graduation, the whole community has turned out to encourage and congratulate their young people. This year, the community has faced many challenges. Tonight, they have gathered to honor the parents, school committee, chief and counselors, together with the teachers and students who have made every effort to meet these challenges and to make this school year an outstanding success. This community has had to weather many changes. Changes that have meant adversity, uncertainty. They have worked to make their education system respond to these, to aid their young people in preparing themselves for the future. shifting world, this community has had to find ways to keep traditional life close to young hearts. The chief and council has had to discover the means of getting people involved and working together to make the kind of education system that will reflect all aspects of life here and benefit the community as a whole. Jason. These students and teachers have had to find ways of reaching goals set by the people, preparing for change, strengthening traditional values, involving everyone in a meaningful way. Tonight, everyone's efforts have found rewards. Tonight, Fond du Lac looks proudly back on the challenges they have met and forward to the adventures which lie ahead. Summer 1983. And in this community of Chippewan people, change may be coming up across the lake with the barges this year. Near this trading post in the north shore of Lake Athabasca, rich mineral discoveries in the 30s created mines. With them came the barges and a change in the way of life. Barges became an important means of supply, but now the mines have closed. After 50 years, Fond du Lac may be on its own again. It used to be a pleasant ritual of summer. The scent of oranges floating up across the water. Excitement stirring everywhere, with new goods arriving from the south and old friends coming in from the north country. Now, a winter road may bring a year-round link to the south. Nearby Stony Rapids may become a new northern government center. There's talk of a new age talk of many more changes, and this community must survive. The boom and bust cycles continue to come and go. They fill the pockets and sour the dreams of many a southerner. However, for the Chippewaian, time will never be a span of years, but generations a continuity of traditions become a vital part of the present. Here, values will never be dollars, 
but the living soul of all things, that which has sustained them through many centuries. The Chippewaian people dwell in northern Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, and the Northwest Territories. Little is known of their heritage. The basic elements of their language links them to the Asian continent and are the most widespread in North America. Through language, they are related to tribes in the Pacific Northwest, to the peoples of the territories, and to the Apache and Navajo of the United States. The Chippewaian are a hunting culture, a flexible and resourceful society that remains strong despite southern influences. From the caribou come their stories and their sustenance. Upon the land, they stake their existence. From it, they take their identity. In less than a generation, the people of Fond du Lac have had to adapt to living in a permanent settlement. Only the very young have come to know this old trading place as a village with facilities, electricity, and other southern services. Previously, people stayed here only a few weeks of the year. Contact with the South was limited to traders, or a few years out at mission school. Today, Modern communications and travel have brought in new social and economic influences. Men once lived solely from trapping and fishing. Now, many fly out to work in remote mines throughout the north. More and more, local people are taking up the jobs as teachers, administrators, and tradesmen. For young people, these changes create a number of pressures, a special challenge. To retain the identity of their community, they must strike a balance between the new and the old, a balance between the economics of the outside world and the age-old hunting economy. of northern Canada feels the influence of change. Distances are shrinking. Old trading places are being transformed into modern service centers for mining, lumber, and other resource industries. Everywhere this new order threatens, leaving the people outside of development, altering the character of communities, taking away the means of maintaining traditional life. New skills are required for the individual to survive. Only education can provide them. But this aspect of education can create many conflicts. It can be viewed as a ticket out with no return in sight. Education must prove its relevance to the people it wishes to serve. It must show that new skills will provide opportunities within communities, that it will help create a secure future. Fond du Lac, with little in the way of materials or equipment, must help students deal with a growing new order. It must do so without upsetting the careful balance of life here. what job experience you've had, what you would like to do, what education you've had, um, your name, your address, 
and your social insurance number, and when you can work. And Here are some of the things I was talking about. <laughs> you have lived in a grade 10 education. Okay. See, you can be, well, you can be a minor, a coach, a babysitter. You're right out doing hair on paying customers quite quickly. You don't need a, a large education for it, but it is a need. We've got it so good, you know. Uh, it costs us very little to set up, very little in government fees, and it, it's a need that we're filling. We had a career week here where we had many, many speakers coming in to talk to the children about careers in various fields. And that was followed by a week in Saskatoon where we took various older students into the workplace to experience it, to see what work was like. Hairdressing, plumbing, carpentry, mechanics, pilot. And that was very fruitful because uh, some of those students uh, are going back into the workplace again to train as apprentices. We have some going in September. That's the beginning. Maybe it's a weak beginning, but it's the beginning. And uh, hopefully they will come back into the, into the community. This school is trying to reach out across the differences, provide resources for young people to make informed decisions. But if they are to survive as the hunters down through the ages have, then they must learn other things that schools and teachers cannot provide. From Fond du Lac, this plane is reaching far into the North Country. With it, this community is reaching back into its traditions to give its young people a strong direction as they face a still uncertain future. The caribou has given them life. What better way for young people to strengthen their Chippewaian identity than to go out on a long hunt and learn what the land can teach? This idea took the community by storm. Norbert Fern, a longtime trapper and fisherman, consented to use his camp in the territories. Everyone from the settlement pitched in. Federal education representatives, catching the spirit of the event, got totally involved in supporting the venture. Three hunters, Norbert Fern, Lawrence Adam, and Willie John Laurent, along with many others, took on the task of guiding the young people. Here men and women who knew the land became the teachers, and teachers with their students came to learn. When the people of Fond du Lac decided to make this contribution, the teachers took a back seat. This was a means of involving everyone, of making education meaningful to the way of life. The decisions were in the hands of the people. On the trip, everything came of its own time. When conditions were right, when something was needed, the adults, taught by example and encouragement, their presence and attention told the young people a great deal. 
The students and teachers became involved in a total experience, learning the preservation and preparation of meat, conservation of the herds, keeping a trap line healthy and producing, reading the signs that keep a person in touch with the land. I'm <laughs> There was no tar or canvas like that. So we were using some um, the carbo hides fresh. We just cut off the hair and uh, we we sew all together about four heights and we put it on the top of it. We just put the stick on the top here and we cover it up and we tied up four corners. That's the way we used to keep uh, to dry our dry meat. So even if the weather is raining or snowing, nothing gonna touch our dry meat. It's always dry and just really good. If a man goes hunting, if they left uh, their meat there, they used to put the stick there, so the, car, the raven scared of it. That's why they used to put the sharp stick on the top of the meat, so that's the way they would use their meat to save it, or from the raven. <laughs> Here, students and teachers experience the inner world of the Chippewaian. Okay. Legends and lore teach that man has serious limitations, that we are the last in the order of things and must respect everything around us in order to survive. The plants, the animals, the earth itself can exist without us, but we need all things to exist. Here is the true meaning of the hunting way of life as it flourishes in a modern setting. Here are the things from which this philosophy has come. Here is the existence which it sustains. By the end of the trip, the people had proven to themselves that local involvement was important, not only for the school, but for the community as a whole. Teachers now were better informed, closer to the history and traditions around them. In the past, Indian education has been the business of governments. 
far removed from communities, people's wishes, and concerns. Indian people were made to feel that they had nothing to contribute. Across the country, Indian people have changed this situation. Education is an important agent for them, to aid them in getting back in control of their lives, and to help communities once again direct their own destinies. Responsibility and involvement at a community level is the essential building block. The hunt has proven this to the people of Fond du Lac. Here, there are untold resources, a whole and rich life to share, an adventure to live. It is for teachers to give these things room and opportunity to grow, not only in their classrooms, but in themselves. symbolizes all that, the, the past, mm -hmm. the present, and the future. Oh. Uh, she realizes that uh, there is a fine richness in, in yeah. the Chippewaian culture, that uh, yeah. in many ways that Fond du Lac is um, yeah. a, a repository, I would say, of folklore and tradition. And she brings this out in her classes, uh, not only in the language, but in the other uh, craft work. There's a lot of potential here, but it has to be tapped. And people have to believe in themselves. I talk to the local people, and we have our own system without uh, neglecting the essentials. We do the you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, as well as everybody else. So we practice a system whereby chipwayonness is an essential ingredient in the curriculum, whether it's in um, social studies or history or in extracurricular activities like dancing. Um, and we have dancing competitions very often, jigging, tea dances, uh, square dances, music, drum making, arts and crafts, storytelling. That's all part of our curriculum. And we have, you know, part of that is a trip up north. Up to the Baron Lands. We'd like to go back there again next year. I think it points out to the uh, resources that are in Fond du Lac and what, how we made use of them on this trip. And 
I was also amazed at the cooperative effort between everyone and that we all did pitch in and do our share. I would say primarily what I like here is working with the, uh, is the teaching part of it because if I weren't interested in it, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't stay. And that's what I am interested in, academic work and things of the mind, the intellect. And my biggest um, joy is if people become curious about life and are interested in furthering themselves. And the most important thing to me is leaving something of intrinsic value that will last people all their lives. Nothing that's fly by night at the moment. Something that will open people's minds, that they can think for themselves, and that uh, something that will be a benefit to them. Uh, in a sense, as long as life lasts. That's what I'm interested Not only here, but anywhere else. Something of intrinsic worth, of intrinsic value. We had to start from scratch and, and try to build up some sort of uh, cooperation. Clearly you can't run a system uh, like a school unless there is cooperation between the local people and the teachers and the children. And uh, I started, oh, we all started running dances in the evening. Um, uh, movies, um, social activities. This was not just to get the, to know the local people, and that was a very important component of our uh, philosophy. Uh, but it was also to get the children to school. We also started uh, an education committee, and we had education committee meetings once a month at least. And again, we got to know more parents through those. We threw them open to the public. And they were a forum for criticism and um, improvement. And that was another way. I think our um, goal, our uh, philosophy, is to make, again, not only the school central and meaningful to the parents and the children, but also to uh, increase and inculcate a sense of history, particularly Chippewa on Indian history, into the system. I've always um, tried to show the children that it is a plus sign to be Indian. <laughs> so this graduation uh, won't be the last one. Uh, he said right now we only got up to grade 9 because uh, we don't have no facilities or classroom for grade 10. But in the future, he said he, we hope this uh, higher grade uh, classroom uh, will be finalized. This plaque is presented to Richard Burke in recognition of outstanding contribution to Indian education in the field of intercultural edu understanding. Education is ever-changing only by the efforts of professionals with insight and energy, and Richard is truly one of these individuals. At a Fond du Lac graduation, everyone gets a chance to participate. All accomplishments are rewarded, and many special thanks go out to members of the community. And last and by no means least, the teachers, who have worked often under uh, fairly strained circum circumstances, and who have gone out evening after evening, sometimes after a very tiring day, and become involved, fully involved, in extracurricular activities. From Mod
modest beginnings, this community and school have come a long way in making education a meaningful part of life here. Tonight, their celebration speaks of many things. It tells how a culture can grow stronger by using education. How teachers can gain the support of the community by involving parents in all they do. Fond du Lac is now engaged in a process to gain full control over its school, a step that most schools in this federal district have already taken. For this village, the road to involvement in education is just opening up, and tonight there is a chance to see not just the challenges they have met, but the many advantages and adventures which will greet them on the way ahead. Yeah.